Okay. All right. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Drawing Hive, as it said in the music. Um, hey, just a reminder, uh, this is brought to you by Visual Arts Passage. Uh, we are, Visual Arts Passages, uh, we offer online mentorships, uh, courses that assist illustrators, character designers, and painters, and we help them to, to develop their career. Um, so don't forget about us. <laughs> um, so tonight, uh, we're drawing geniuses, and they're not like I'm, I, they wouldn't. They weren't my go-to, right, Timmy? I mean, it's like yeah, yeah. Know, I had Tesla and and uh, 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 Einstein and Aristotle and all these thoughts of you know. Okay, we think of the geniuses, but we kind of put it in contemporary times and what uh, you know people that really affected. Uh, maybe culture uh more currently um not so maybe more crowd pleasers too yeah yeah <laughs> well uh, how do you lamar gets that has not gotten all the due attention she deserves so i'm really glad she's up there not at all not at all um so uh we're gonna start uh, rick rubin and that was like timmy's first choice uh i said you got to put rick rubin in there it represents yeah. art, arts and uh, I think that's 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 great. Uh, Rick is the co-founder of Def Jam Records or Recordings, and um, is co-president of I don't know if he still is of Columbia Records. Um, so pretty major dude in the in the, <laughs> but a really innovative individual. Yeah, um, he's touched Lamar. everything everything I love in music. He's pretty much he's been in the the hemisphere of it somehow. Uh, Hedy Lamarr is a big time Hollywood screen actress in the 30s and 40s. And uh, Cassandra, you could probably tell me a lot more about this, but I know that she was uh, oh. in integral in uh, developing the fundamentals of what uh, Wi Fi and Bluetooth is based on. Yeah, that. the hopping frequency. So she's kind yeah. of like the grandmother of that. Without her, we wouldn't have Wi Fi or Bluetooth or GPS. Yeah. And huge uh, advancements in GPS that was uh, used in military in World War II. So, um, yeah, more than just a just a pretty face, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Carl Sagan, um, I, 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 you know, my understanding of Carl Sagan, most of it was the Cosmos, the uh, ser series, but he was a, uh, uh, I guess it's a. Um, um, astrophysicist um, mm -hmm. and, and uh, astronomer. Um, so I don't know how much of you follow, he, re he really pop um, popular, popular, popularized uh, like the, the term extraterrestrial uh, because that was, that was what he was chasing, which I thought was pretty interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then uh, I remember very well, uh, Jane Goodall, all the uh, National Geographic. Love her. Oh, unbelievable. Um, primatologist and anthropologist. Uh, I remember all the National Geographic uh, um, films, things we saw in school, things you saw, uh, things you saw on television. Uh, just an amazing individual. So that's who we're drawing tonight. Great, great faces, too. Uh, mm -hmm really fun yeah. i love the photography i love the lighting and um after i said all that we, you know those are our four references we're going to be doing still be doing our three poses two 20 minute poses and one long pose that you could either do three and four or do um, or just do one of them uh in a 40 minute or 40 minute pose so we're ready to go. What are we looking at for uh, how to post tonight, Tim? Yeah, everybody, please post your work uh, with us tonight. Uh, we post to Instagram and we check it out at the end of the night. So we want to see your work. Uh, we will give you all the tags and everything at the end of the first pose, which is 20 minutes. Um, 
Everybody on Discord, please come up with a good tag for this one. Uh, it's got to be on theme and easy to spell. Um, if you're not on Discord, I'm going to drop links to our photo reference and Discord in the chat on Zoom. Um, and uh, we'll get you over there. And I'm going to leave the reactions on tonight. Last week, somebody got out of control with the reactions. <laughs> <laughs> they went so, a little exuberant. Yeah, yeah. I think John was talking and it was impressive that he could maintain his focus as... <laughs> It got wildly out of control. Um, so don't ruin it for everybody, please. All right. Well, I'm going to, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to uh, introduce an artist that uh, was very important to me and has been important to a lot of illustrators. And then um, uh, talk about value control. So something that our... understands really well. That's our educational segment for the That's evening. our educational segment tonight. Nice. The yeah. more you know. The more you know with Johnny, with little John. <laughs> you know. Little John. Uh, the little I know is what it should be called. The little I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, start, you start reading about these, you know, incredibly bright individuals and, and you're reading about what they accomplished and what they figured out. And you just, you know, I just had blank stare at my computer about half the time. Um, yeah. So impressive. Mm -hmm. The coolest thing, uh, Cassandra, I don't know, or John, I don't know if you know much about the Voyager project, which was Carl oh, Sagan's. A little bit. Like, yep. Yeah. Which is, I, I'm going to butcher it, but essentially it was, we, we shot a, like, what do you call it? A satellite? Not a satellite. Is it called a satellite technically? Uh, yes. But, it, so. but it's the gold disc. It's, it's like our, the relic of humanity that's going to go outside of our solar system. Oh yeah. And it's mm -hmm. this, uh, I believe it's technically vinyl that is, well, that in, in space will last, it's a golden vinyl that will last like, you know, 5 billion years or something. Wow. Um, and it has all these, it has like recordings of kids laughing and kind of like an, like an audio history of our world and all of these like decoding instructions for like, if anybody were to ever, you know, acquire it, they could maybe somehow, because it, it, the fun, there's a radio lab episode about it. That's really beautiful. Cause it's a love story about Carl Sagan and his wife. Um, oh, I think I've heard that. Yeah. It's really yeah, good. Because they, they fell in love during the, the project. Um, and when they fell in love, his wife, um, which I, I should look her up because she deserves as much credit as him. Um, I'm yeah. just not, I'm just not very R R smart. Was that Drury? I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Um, um, I got and, and, and Drurian, uh, Drurian. Um, when, when she was like, so he called her towards the end of this project before the launch and they really hadn't like gone on any dates or had any romantic interaction and he was like, I think we should get married. And she was like, I agree. <laughs> and so, and she, she was like, I was head over heels in love with him. And so they brought her to a room because she was like just butterflies in love. And they recorded, they used like several devices to record just her body in a room. And they included that on the satellite as like, this is yeah. a recording of like human happiness. Wow. It was really interesting because they were like, hypothetically, you can read this maybe and understand it if, you know, so it's, it's a really fun story. And I don't know. And then Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan kind of walked. So guys like Neil deGrasse Tyson and, you know, Bill Nye could really right. be. Uh, well, Neil deGrasse Tyson met him when he was in high school, 17 years that's old. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. They, um, S um, Sagan started out at Harvard, I think, and then ended up at Cornell. Yeah. And um, when he was at Harvard, he had met Tyson. And then uh, yeah. I don't, you know, know much about the relationship at all, but yeah. that was, that was going to be, that was one of the choices for, for tonight. Also, he would have been yeah. great. Yeah. Um, um. But as you when, said, more, he was more, he was a great explain. He's a great explainer of things. Yeah. He's like, he's like almost like a genius educator. Right. Um, 
which if anybody's wondering, we, we did talk about doing painters and illustrators and we will, we, did, we didn't want to pick just one for tonight. Cause we thought that would be a quick way to have a riot. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so, so we're going to, we're, we're saving that for another episode. Yeah. Well, we can do several episodes of that. Um, yeah. We could do famous illustrators, famous painters, uh, famous photographers. Be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Cassandra. Yes. You got the cardboard out. Oh see, yeah. See a palette knife and some, uh, some brushes over there. Um, you working in acrylics right now? Yep, I treated my cardboard with GAC 100, which is just an acrylic polymer. So that seals the cardboard so the cardboard won't suck up my paint. So it lets me just not waste paint for when I start and I can throw things down pretty quick. So it's a archival cardboard. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know that uh, haven't seen a lot of Cassandra's work, definitely look it up. Um, it's really impressive and somebody I like to point to that no need for me to look at a credit when I see one of her pieces uh it's there's a voice there's a personality to it and she's very much her her own artist <laughs> thank you John. oh and I and I got great news Raymond's joining us tonight he's just uh running late so I told him don't bother um <laughs> 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 no we got uh, so raymond Benia is going to be here later tonight so that'll be fun he did study hall with us last night and he was struggling over something it's like he couldn't re oh he, he, he's so quick with artists names and pulling up yeah. uh examples of their work and posting it and helping you know pointing the students that way and he couldn't remember an artist's name last night and i said i know you're having a re you're, you're still in gr you're still grieving i was going <laughs> to ask how much smack talking went on there for you that's the only thing that was said <laughs> and, and I said, you're still struggling. He says, yes, I'm going through the grief process right now. <laughs> it's because you couldn't think of the name. The grief, yeah, the grieving process. It was funny. That is funny. For those of you who don't know, uh, John and Ray are big football fans. And they they definitely, their teams played last weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought you were talking about just the grief of like not being able to think of an artist, which I know that would bother him. Oh, yeah, that would. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh he starts yeah. he starts having uh, John and Dale moments of being a little bit older, not remember. I, remember. I texted I texted Cassandra. I texted both of them before the class because I thought Ray was going to be there too. Uh -huh. And I just thought I just thought this is a horrible setup for a first class to have John and Ray in the same room. John <laughs> showed up in his jersey and everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I told and I told Ray, and I, I really thought this was funny. I told Ray, I said, don't worry about coming to the first class. Enjoy watching the Bills tonight. I'll watch the Chiefs next week. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you weren't wrong. <laughs> well, might have a problem this week. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, let's let me I'm gonna jump in and do this, Timmy. Uh yeah, let's do it. Uh I'm gonna go back to uh here we go. If you do this a couple more times, we're going to get you a theme song. Yeah. Oh, please, please, please. <laughs> okay, so Cassandra, I know you're well aware of Mr. Maxfield Parrish. Love him. One of the greatest illustrators ever, American illustrator that worked early 20th century to mid 20th century. Um, he actually lived, he, you know, I, I don't want to get too far into this, but he um, was one of the most notable il illustrators working and, you know, it just got to the point it was like oversaturated and the business kind of just like turned their back to him. And he he was very, very upset about it, uh, bitter about it in his old age. Uh, they, tried to do a, they tried to do a retrospect of his work that um, I, I think it was at the Society of Illustrators. And he said, um, you haven't spoken to me in 25 years. I really don't want to do that. <laughs> that was the, wow. that was the rumor how the conversation went. Anyway, I chose Maxfield Parrish. He's actually, in my mind, he's one of the, the first real fantasy illustrators too. Yeah. Uh, just phenomenal uh, with his with his visual storytelling. But a great, great picture maker, great designer. You've all seen his work, most, most likely. I mean, Daybreak, you'll see in just a minute. But I, I'm using him as an example for someone that understands value at a really high level. Um, you know, the value structure of that figure, you know, 
reading so beautifully the bottom half of it you know where the horizon line and the water is is all is really dark and above the horizon lines it's much lighter but it's so cohesive it's just perfect in value to read as a cohesive silhouette shape of a figure most of you recognize that painting probably mm -hmm. this is the old king cole this just hangs at the St. Regis Hotel in, in uh, downtown Manhattan. And uh, I convinced my wife to stay there a couple of nights so I could say I stayed at the hotel where the um, uh, the painting was. Um, it put me back about two months mortgage payments <laughs> <laughs> at it. the time. This was, was it really that? It's that, it's this that was, fancy? Well, when in... Uh, 1985 it was it was it was like 500 bucks a night so wow. it was pretty expensive that's pretty that's pretty expensive <laughs> yeah and i don't know what it, how how expensive it is now but it was and the funny the funny part was um i booked it and i would just i booked my trip i was just getting ready to book my trip and everything and by by happenstance i said i was really excited to the person i was booking the hotel room there's you booked hotels very differently back then i had to call the hotel and said i was so excited to see the painting and i'm so glad they told me that it was down for they were cleaning it <laughs> so <laughs> i changed i i changed the dates to when it was back uh, but anyway beautiful painting this is some of the it, things that really relate to fantasy. Really good painter. Okay, so what I want to talk to you about tonight, my quick uh, little bit of education is about value control. That is something that you really have a lot of latitude with. Uh, you can take, this is this is directly from my foundations, my recorded foundations class that I, that I put together last year. But, I, you know, I drew that little sphere on the, the, uh, on the left-hand side it's a dark against the light, and just a little quick drawing in pastel. And then I put a really strong dark around the same sphere, and it's a light against the dark. Nothing changed at all with the object I'm drawing. It's all based on is something light against dark or dark against light. And that really is so important in picture making, how things read, how we see things. Uh, there's a couple of drawings I did for that foundations class uh, the Venus de Mila and the winged, uh, the, yeah, the winged Nike of Samoth. And um, the, uh, good good call, Cassandra. Well, it's a beautiful drawing. It's easy to tell. Well, the reason I, 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 show, I wanted to show them was the value control. In this light, there's all kinds of variation of light and dark. And in here that describe light hitting form on the light figure. But the darks, are never are the are, are the darks inside the statue itself don't compete with the darks in the background so that's called local value local well, local color local value it's the overall light like if you squint at it it's an overall light you you when you squint you 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 everything kind of comes together and the values kind of all mush together and you reduce the resolution and you see the silhouette shape of it. That's also very important in drawing and painting. Um, same, you know, vice versa on the other, on the dark against the light, the, the drawing on the right, the lights that are describing form do not compete with the lights in the background. So it appears everywhere. It's got explanation of light raking across and explaining the form, but it's still, when you squint at it, you see the silhouette shape of it and shape you know, constructive picture making is based on the idea of your picture is a collection of shapes and you control it by how they read, light against dark or dark against light. So here's a really great example of a Maxfield Parrish painting on the left. Light figure, dark background. When he photographed it, it's dark figure, light background. He was able to make those adjustments based on how he wanted to make the uh, make the picture, design the picture, the light and dark pattern of the picture. The explanation of light explaining forms, proportions, anatomy, all of that are exactly the same. But he could adjust the value, first of all, based on what it's against. But you could tell he also really lightened the value up in the hair 
darken the value on the belt um, or the tie, whatever that is. And um, but overall, you squint at it and you just look at that powerful silhouette shape. And it's so important in to be able to control like that in picture making. So you can take uh, Rick Rubin here. He's a light figure against the dark background on the left. And he's kind of becomes a dark figure with a, a against the light background if you push the value light enough. Um, you can control that. You, you can use the information of light explaining form and then control how it reads based on the overall local color and value. And that is value control in the way I, I see it anyway. That's all I got. That's, so. that's gold right there. That's my mantra when I'm starting paintings and I'm like, is this light on dark or dark on light? Like I'll just repeat it over just so that I keep track of what, what I mean for it to be. It, it wasn't bad. <laughs> I, learned, hey, I, learned all, I learned it all from Cassandra and Ray. Nuh -uh. The most, uh, John, don't you feel like some of the most golden things, like some of the most golden advice that you are constantly trying to hand out oftentimes it's like the most simple. Oh, absolutely. I, I remember being, Timmy, I remember being in the, uh, it was in the Hobbs building at, at the, when we were doing the Illustrated oh, yeah. Academy. Gary Kelly's walking around the room and he, he's looking at all the assignments and he kind of said, you know, I'm going to try to help everybody out here. Real, he goes, a picture is a collection of shapes. Yeah. And how you see an object on a page is based on if it's the, whatever object it is, if it's light against dark or dark against light. So don't con quit trying to con make things so confusing. Keep it very simple and try to keep that in the back of your mind. And I, I, I think it's great Gary Kelly said that because he's one of the best picture makers that ever existed. Uh, yeah. He's just an absolute phenomenal designer. Yeah, it's just interesting. It's so simple. Yeah, but, but, when, he, but when he said that, I was like, damn it. I wish I would have said that. <laughs> it, it's so well, simple. It's so simple, but yet you, it still feels like you have to hit people over the head with it for it to stick. Oh, people forget it all the time. Yeah. I forget it all the time and I have to keep reminding myself and I know better. It's, it's one of those simple to explain, extremely hard to master. Yes. Because you're, because the, yeah. the the meaning of value control becomes more and more, uh, yeah, it, it complicated as you as you develop. It's it, it gets simpler, and also gets more complicated at the same time. I yeah. guess I guess the most fun part of me hearing about it when John, when I first probably heard you talk about it, um, because I had all of these photographers that I loved and art that I I was like, oh, I like that art. And you just start seeing it. Yeah. You start to notice it and you become aware of it. And you're like, oh, there's like this trend that I was completely blind to. Um, yeah. Despite it being so simple, you know. Well, I know what you mean. Uh, you know, uh, my teacher, Bill Mon, I remember his first, uh, who studied with, uh, with John's dad. Uh, explain forming cash shadows and value control to us on the first head drawing class. And I went outside as if I was like, a, I, I saw for the first time, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it's like that pulling random people. Don't you see the cash shadows <laughs> on the telephone poles? Yeah. My God, they're right there. <laughs> I, can, I can see that on uh, what's, what's, what, what's the street? Powell street, right? So, uh, chest, chestnut chestnut so. was our, uh, that was the uh, illustration, the undergrad illustration building. Was yeah, yeah, building. yep. And I could see that uh, that community reacting really well to you saying that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I got banned from that building for a month after that. Like somebody help this kid. Yeah. Hey, Ray, so we got a new episode with you coming out on Studio Bridge on Monday, which is exciting. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so I, I, uh, it, yeah. You're editing it right now? Yeah. Which means, it's, I'm uh, gonna it's... Put, which means I'm going to put an intro and an exit on it and I'm going to throw it out there. 
<laughs> yeah. uh, There's a difference between a Ray edit and a John edit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you I, see I, that, I would... John? Do you see with John's episode? You always see the hand of the clock just like jumping, like sporadically <laughs> jumping around the background. Yeah, Cliff. But if anybody's wondering, we have a podcast. It's called Studio Ridge. It comes out every Monday. Um, we've got some good episodes backlogged, so it'll be fun. But Ray, I would love it if you just briefly talked about your next one. Yeah. So uh, this is, uh, uh, I interviewed uh, Leo uh, Avero. He's a, um, a filmmaker, a art director, and a concept artist uh, over at uh, One Pixel Brush. Uh, and it's a um, outsourcing studio, but they handle everything from like um, video games like, you know, Back for Blood uh, or, um, you know, uh, they worked on Last of Us 2 horizon zero dawn um and and then as well as like commercials for apple like they just finished up an apple commercial for their newest round of laptops uh and also movies like blue beetle uh and so uh leo's uh works for them and it and he's from um indonesia and it was it was great it was uh, a 12 hour time difference so he was had his coffee uh in the uh, uh in the background as as we were talking, but it was it was a great time. It was a great time. We went through a lot of his work, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited for everyone to see it because I, I think he's a phenomenal artist and and just uh, it, it's it. We talked a lot about also just being an artist from a third world, you know, a developing country, as you know, uh, and making it, you know, uh, in the states and making it and you know, working for video games and movies and and what what that process was like. So. I'm excited, and then I'm I'm I, I'm booking you, Ray. I'm <laughs> I'm like I'm becoming your podcast agent now. I booked you I with uh, uh, Tamara Vashi, uh, which uh, Tamara, if you're not familiar, um, is not an artist, but is an incredibly bright um, individual, and is the host of the podcast The Lonely Palette, which is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. Didn't she just get a shout out in the New Yorker? She was just in the New Yorker, the New York Times. Um, my email booking this was horribly timed. It was like the day that those articles came out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so I was just like, hey, how's it going? I uh, just thought I'd check in. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you're famous now. Uh, remember me? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> No, if you really she, want to take your audience to the next level, consider <laughs> you should do our podcast. She did, just, she did just get a big shout out and she's extremely nice, really, really talented. Um, if you ever want to check out a fun podcast that takes a deep dive into, you know, it's changed over the years, like the delivery of it, but it originally started, she would go to museums and would just like there'd be a Monet, she would have an episode dedicated to an artist like Monet. And then she would just go up to people looking at the Monet and talk to random people about it. And it was such a fun kind of experiment for a podcast. Yeah. Then, those are the ones and, I've heard. Yeah. And she's so, she's so smart and so well-versed on all of it, that it, it's also very educational. Um, you're not just hearing, you know, uh, like tourists <laughs> talk about art. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it'll be a fun one. I think it's going to be a collision of uh, uh, nerdydom with you and with her, Ray. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm you excited. Know, yeah. Uh, it's going to be a, I got to up my mic game even more. Maybe we should uh, talk about just doing studio upgrades. Oh, Yeah. You you just send me John an invoice for your home studio. (laughs) It's cool that I uh, bought this Neumann mic for a couple of G's, right? (laughs) Yeah, her podcast sounds really good. Yeah, yeah. And what's funny is I saw a photo and everything. So she works with Hubspoke Media, I believe, and. uh, uh, it looks like everybody produces stuff out of their closets, which is pretty <laughs> funny. 
but it <laughs> sounds it sounds like they are doing an amazing job. Yeah. It's probably sound it's it's probably sound treated with all the sweaters and yeah. <laughs> we'll buy you some sweaters. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We can't. We'll give you a we'll give you a thrift store budget and uh, right. that's that's it, man. Yeah. I got a bunch of sweater, a bag of sweaters, and instead of that preamp, some buffalo. About, It'll be me. appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is true. Right. What are you doing now? It's kind of fun. You're going in there with the lines. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I just set down like a, a basic shape to kind of block things in. And then I'm just kind of refining some of the shadow shapes, uh, the areas where the light and shadow meet. And I'm just dividing up my picture into those two major forms so that I can go back in and then start uh, painting them, painting them in. I'm glad you flipped it back around to the right orientation because <laughs> I was going to tell you earlier, it's backwards. <laughs> okay, everybody, that's the end of our first uh, post. So we're moving on to the next image. Uh, it's going to be 20 minutes. Please post your work, man. The, the discord kind of failed me on this one. Xander, I appreciate the attempts, <laughs> but, but uh, I had to, I came up with a tag. Uh, the tag tonight is going to be, you got to, you got to post your image in the caption. You got to have at visual arts passage at drawing hive and at brainiac hive beat brainiac B R A I N I A C hive. So uh, please post your work. We'll, we'll drop it in the chat and uh, move on to the next image. That's a great value lecture john i i feel like we uh you were quite prepared considering last night we were that's exactly what we were talking about the whole time <laughs> yeah <laughs> For those of you who don't know we were uh, we started the well, class started last week but we had our first um study hall session and uh it's always a lot of fun and uh we saw Basically, if you're a student of Visual Arts Passage, uh, you get the ability to have a live midweek uh, critique of your work. Um, and it's instead of just your your own instructor, you'll, you'll have the entire faculty uh, or different members of the faculty um, to that look at your work and give you feedback on it. So last night it was Ray, myself, uh, Dale Stefanos and Rob Chandler, who teaches in our um, character design program. And I, I think it's so valuable to get different points of view like that. And, you know, how many <laughs> of our illustration students are interested in visual development and um, uh, doing fantasy work, doing RPG games? And it's just so great to be able to have... Uh, you know, I can't remember who it was last night that was describing uh, uh, what a um, keyframe or splash art for the for the um, game industry is. And he's saying that's really what I want to do. And and he mentioned that I said, "Well, do you ever hear of this this artist named John Nymeister?" And he goes, "Oh my God, that guy's so awesome!" I said, "You do know he teaches in this program, <laughs> and he'll be here next Wednesday night." I thought that was so great. <laughs> <laughs> oh this guy's unbelievable oh yeah oh of course yeah of course john yeah oh yeah <laughs> what do you ask <laughs> that was great it was great it was, it was very honest yeah and you just you know in that uh you you get people from you know in all different parts of the World. of the program too yeah and all in world you know and uh we are the chat uh was just on fire it was yeah, unbelievable it was whatever so you're getting feedback from the instructors and why you're doing that you have the students also that are there that well, most you know a lot of them are just there just to listen um and they were giving suggestions and resources. Hey, I saw this. Hey, I saw that. It was great. Yeah, it was fun. 
Yeah, a lot of fun. I'm so glad it was like a good kickoff for the semester. Oh, and uh, Cassandra, you would be proud. Usually, you know, because our illustration program is the largest, usually it's dominated by the number of illustration students that submit. Last night, the painting program had more than the illustration program did. Yep. Yeah. A lot of them was our first semester students too, which I was really yep. proud of them for jumping in. They've been already working their butt off when we just started. Yeah. Like they've just just really stepped it up and they're immediately digging in. I'm so impressed. No, oh, they're ready. They they're just ready to go after it. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, you're gonna have fun. Me too, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a question, Ray, because I read a <laughs> I read an okay. article. That was pretty cruel, John. Uh, okay. um, I, That's I, Timmy saying uh, that. John. Yeah. That's Timmy saying that. Um no, Ray, I was I read an article in Communication Arts. It was an interview with you <laughs> um a while back. And you you seemed like you had like quite a uh like a growth spurt as an artist. Is that accurate? That uh, that's kind of what I took away from it. Like you talked about that, like that, like yeah. in school, it wasn't, I don't know. You weren't like, you weren't treated like the chosen one. Does that make sense? No. Yes. Yeah. It makes total sense. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and as educators that's kind of cruel too i, I don't know i'm kidding no <laughs> is it i'm is sorry it, you were a very good student, were you? <laughs> no i wasn't i wasn't it's true that's that's what only, i told uh, well only only it, one can be the chosen one you know <laughs> um, um fun. but i was gonna ask like as educators as teachers what's like the furthest like leaps and bounds you've seen from like one student where you're just like, that was like shocking. Like, uh, yeah, I had a student that was, uh, I mean, struggled with drawing, struggled with everything. And, uh, and, um, this is, you know, I used to teach at, uh, universities, uh, for, you know, over 13 years. So in a class in one university, I was, I was, uh, teaching a student and they were just always struggling with things. And I, I, I kind of felt like some of the, the, uh, the teachers had basically made up their mind about, you know, who this person was. And I, I saw somebody who was really passionate, but just wasn't, their aptitude wasn't at the same level. You know, they learned differently and um, they just came into school with, you know, uh, college with their, the first drawing class being right there, you know, and I'd gotten them for their second drawing class. It was, it was, so they're really young artistically. Uh, and, uh, I just remember just reassuring them that, uh, just good, you know, giving them the best information I can give them and just reassuring them that like looking at artists and constantly practicing and developing your skills that they will see, they would seek growth. And I, you saw a lot of growth during the semester, but they just kept going and going and going. And, you know, a student that was for, for a student that kind of barely got by in, in school, um, you know, nothing, nothing necessarily like exceptional considered exceptional uh, grade wise yeah, ended up, you know, a couple of years later, keep uh, after, much work moving to LA and now works at Marvel. <laughs> so That's wild. Yeah. Uh, and so that's it, like the, just uh, that's the NBA of. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, and they did it by themselves and it was, it was, it was really great to see. It was really great to see. So do you think uh, that there's like, do you think that there's like a common thread when like the, um, this idea of like the most improved award, right? I kind of not, not I, that's like the wrong one. Cause it doesn't denote like an actual accomplishment, but where a person go like has leaps and bounds difference. Do you think that there's a common thread in attitude or personality or like approach to learning? I, I think in attitude there it's common. It, and that is a, a fierce curiosity 
it just they just are just so hungry for information and want to learn uh and really fall in love with the the art you know and uh i think that's the common common bond uh common thread because usually the best students i've ever had aren't weren't necessarily ones that came in already fairly far along it were ones that weren't uh we're kind of middle of the pack but we're very passionate about um learning how to improve themselves and i taught life drawing uh, and uh intermediate painting so um you know when they really got into you know fell in love with just you could see them falling in love with the subject and, and just starting to blossom and 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 grow uh and it's the that's usually where you find the most uh leaps and bounds uh in growth uh the ones that really are just putting in the time and and want to because they're really curious and they really like they like art. I know it's funny to say, but like there were students that I've taught that didn't really care for art outside of, you know, class assignments. I have a, Cassandra and I have a, and again, a number of students that have like really surprised me. Uh, most recently have a student in our painting program that went through our illustration program and, you know, picked up, picked up really good process picked up a an aesthetic and then just came into the painting program and started painting i'd never really you know it was it was a, in a very different approach and it was a, i'm talking about elmira cassandra oh yeah and i it just really surprised me it just kind of knocked me out how good it was and uh but had spent all this time figuring a way to move forward in the, the picture making aspect of it and the you know the process and then uh obviously Elmira had a a good understanding of artists that that uh they that they really liked so um that surprised me you know and I thought that I thought it, it well, yeah. there's always a challenge of painting what you think you're supposed to do and then watching someone figure out what they want to do and then they will knock your socks off. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And you could, yeah, seeing that difference when, when the light clicks, oh man. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's cool to see it, right? Oh, and it's, it's so like, exciting. <laughs> and I, I, I still remember, I still remember that. You know, when it clicked for me multiple times, you know, I, uh, but I remember I was, uh, <laughs> in, uh, I, I had the fortune of studying with uh, an artist that, uh, Cassandra and, and John know, um, uh, by the name of John Rush. And I remember John one day we, we were just talking about composition and, controlling information and just design and uh <laughs> i just did not get it i it just it was hard and then one day he was he would he had had me look at winslow homer and I'll never forget this and he had, and i was just i fell in love with this work and we were talking about the the art the week after and he's like yeah you see how he's doing this and this and you see how like reality really doesn't matter in this case it's it's all about the design that's driving look at the design it doesn't matter you know and i was like yeah and i remember looking up at my work and seeing all of a sudden my work looked awful <laughs> i thought it was really great at first and it just looked awful and uh i was like oh my god but it was exciting because i said i knew i know what's wrong with it now i know what needs to be mm -hmm. you know uh changed uh because i could finally see it I mean, you really are uh, learning how to see in a different way. Uh, yeah. It's great stuff. I mean, I, I, I that's what I, I get that out of the, you know, all the, you know, in class and also in study hall. I, I just love, I love seeing people, you know, having sets of problems and everyone coming together to find a solution for them and seeing people grow uh just from that you know uh and just being like wow i can't believe that look at that piece you know uh i saw that when it was just a thumbnail you know it's like one of those things like i remember when you when you were just a thumbnail <laughs> <laughs> 
a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the the great thing about being an artist is that it's a it's almost like you have these uh these frosted like uh, plates of glass in front of your eyes and as you learn like you know uh these layers just get peeled away and peeled away you start to see more and more and more and so the things that you thought you knew become recontextualized you know they they become different uh and much more a completely different experience because you're viewing them with different eyes uh and you know today it I, mean, I feel like it's like i there are things that and i um i'm wondering if uh, the both of you uh, have the same experience where like i'm i was painting today in the studio and i realized man you know i wouldn't have been able to make decisions like i'm doing right now 10 years ago oh yeah uh, i just wouldn't have seen it i just wouldn't have seen it um well it's exciting having the moments too because it's like you know not often are we good enough like good about stepping back and being like oh i've i've been really working hard and look at this improvement but when you have those moments you'll be like I've I've been learning. We're continue to learn. We're able to make more complex images now than we were before, and that's thrilling. Yeah, and it's uh, you you really, it, 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 I always feel I, I and I think it's really exciting, which is and it's why I uh, I don't see myself stopping painting anytime soon. Uh, is is I always am. whenever I have a huge discovery or I just feel like I'm uh, I've gone to another phase of my, uh, my development, I always feel like I'm just scratching the surface. It's like, now I understand the absolute bare minimum of like how to, how to do this thing. Thank goodness. I've, I've cro finally crossed the <laughs> beginners uh, uh, stage. And then you realize like, maybe five years down the line when you have another leap, you're like, okay, now I understand the bare minimum of what you need to be, you know, uh, to yeah. put together a decent painting, you know? Uh, I was thinking a lot about that when I saw, I went, I went to the show, uh, Harvey Dunn uh, and his students at the Norman Rockwell Museum a couple of years ago. Ooh. And uh, it was cool. They even had like Harvey Dunn's death mask. Oh wow! In the wild, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the and death I think mask. It's um. It's when somebody passes away, uh, they make the plaster cast of their face. Mm -hmm. Uh, and their hand, and he, and I think his hands. They did. They, uh, they casted his hands as well. Um. They have one of Lincoln, right? Yeah, Lincoln. yeah. I was just gonna, I was just okay. gonna say, there's one of Lincoln. Yeah, Harvey Dunn was a pretty impressive dude, man. Man, be, be a, a war correspondent artist, and you know, walking through a battlefield, drawing while people are shooting around you, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, no pressure. That's not for me. I'm I'm pretty sure they had the uh the little gizmo that the the, 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 the box the, that he made the box yeah yeah do you, you know about that Cassandra so yeah. if you if you guys don't know who Harvey Dunn was I mean I uh take take a good look look up um go to uh, students of Howard Pyle Howard Pyle is kind of considered the father of American illustration and. Um, great illustrator but he was also a great instructor in the late started in the late 1800s at the university of delaware i believe and ray will correct me on all this stuff but um go on go on open up his, <laughs> open up, his, open up, open up I'm okay, i guess i'm okay so far opened up his own kind of summer program and to do his own teaching and he had literally some of the greatest illustrators come out of his, you know, of his, of, of his teaching of anybody. Really amazing. You can add to that, Ray. Yeah. It was, uh, uh, after 
it, so he he set up a a school in in his you know in where he lived in Chatsworth, uh in the Brandywine River uh you know uh area uh region yeah thanks Cassandra and so that's why they're his students are nicknamed the Brandywine students or the Brandywine school uh and it included but, you know uh Rose Red Girls. Uh, the Red Rose Girls, it includes uh, Wyeth, N.C. Wyeth, and um, Juno. Oh, man, Philip Bart, Juno, yeah. Philip Bart Goodwin. A couple people that okay. are did Yeah. Like you pretty good. Uh, Amazing. Lo love that. Yeah. But Dunn, Dunn was the... So I, I think the out of the students... It's really interesting. Uh, I think out of the students, N.C. Wyeth was probably the most famous. Yeah. Um, but Dunn, I think, was the person who carried the torch out of all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, pedagogically. Because uh, then Dunn went and... Uh, I think he did. He tried to do his own thing for a little bit, and then he ended up at the Grand Central School. Uh, of arts or the Grand Central, yeah, Grand Central School of Art, and those classes he he taught people like Dean Cornwell, Dan Content, and um, another uh, group of Salt artists. Tepper. I mean, just like incredible, yeah, set of illustrators. But uh, so his, so his, you see his students there, and they're just it's insane. Um, but they also had his. his colleagues i mean they had they had a bunch of schoonovers they had the uh, schoonovers illustrations uh covers for john carter carter of mars which mm -hmm. is wild um and there's this one i think it was was it a done no it was um it might have been a schoonover no who else did they have? they have they had harold von schmidt um and then they had like uh yeah uh, uh, all the rest of these people, and so, but you could see the cool thing about it is that they were all, for the most part, I think all of them were maybe with the exception of one piece, they were all full color, uh, and it was really cool to see because a lot of them, a lot of those pieces were not produced reproduced in, right, uh, in full color, yet they were designed to it, and that's totally like a Howard Pyle thing, like if, sort of the idea of like. What you you know they really felt that they were on the forefront of a true American art form, you know, and they and they were they, you know, they were painters yeah. uh, in their minds, and so. Well, they uh, definitely treated it as an art form. Yeah, and they were painters. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so God, yeah. But the cool thing about it was, like, I went around some some of the colors were wild, you know, that Dunn was putting in his pieces, and I'm like and I'd went around with my phone and I put my, uh, through the camera view, I, I put everything to monochromatic mode, like a monochrome. So I could see everything in grayscale mm. and you could see what the actual pieces look like when they are like cl pretty close to what they were, uh, uh, when they got reproduced, you know, I had a good idea of, uh, and you can see like the values are just absolutely perfect. So yeah, like four or five colors in an area and it was all the same value. So what? it just looked like what? one value. Right. Ray, I hate to interrupt. Did you do that before you scanned everything? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, That's but a really I did. Cool uh, idea. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Oh my god, I I was I was by myself too, Cassandra, and like, you know, my 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 wife had dropped dropped me off. It's just like, just call me when you're done. I'm gonna go. <laughs> and I was telling everyone, you know, how to deal with their phone and why and the history behind it and. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Ray's having to pay off the dossiers. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just don't call the cops, please. <laughs> Look over there. Look over there. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. funny. A, a couple of times I've been to museums with Brent Watkinson where he would say to me, he says, no, John, I'm probably going to get thrown out, but no worries. I'll meet you at so-and-so. <laughs> <laughs> he went in knowing he's going to get thrown out. <laughs> Because he was photographing when he shouldn't have been. So oh, it just, yeah. It just used to crack me up. I'm like, okay. 
Go do it. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> well, you know, they you know, I so the 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 issue with me was well, I got lucky because there weren't a lot of guards around there. Not if anyone from Norman Rockwell's uh listening, I didn't do anything wrong or <laughs> bad to the pieces. I just was like really cl- I mean, they had like the Count of Monte Cristo from the by Meet Schaefer there. Like a legendary painting. And right. so I was just like every stroke I was analyzing. So uh, this this was at Norman Rockwell or was that Brandywine? Yeah. No, yeah. it was at Norman Rockwell. It was at the Norman Rockwell Museum, yeah. Uh Stephanie Plunkett's here tonight. So um <laughs> just, just kidding. Just curator <laughs> there. Um you may get an ill mannered right? letter after this. Yeah, I know. Uh but just the simplicity and design. That's my whole point. By the, this is where was I going with this? Uh <laughs> simplicity and design was just and the value control was just so simple. It was just almost insulting that I hadn't seen I didn't notice it before. Um I love that. Where was I going? I don't know. Right after you hit geek, you kind of lost yourself. <laughs> I know, right? Geek button kicked in. We all go there. This is the thing with like Dean Cornwell. Like when you look at those pieces, you're like, it's just one value. Why am I using 50 values to describe this area here? Like here they are just one and then moving on. And it's such a stronger, such a stronger picture. You know, it's, I always have that moment. I don't know if anybody else has that moment where you're just like, what is wrong with me? I'll tell you a pretty good moment in my life of learning, I was listening to my father and Bernie Fuchs talk about art and they were talking about, Bernie said his favorite, most of his favorite paintings have a maximum of three values in them. He said, there's, he goes, I love things that are just so simple. And so the value structures are very, very simple. And I couldn't comprehend that for years. (laughs) I was just, I was just trying to, how do you do that? Um, but I think what he was referring to it was that the effect of two values or three value, really limited value structure. Right. So powerful. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I remember Harvey Dunn's World War I poster that I saw. It's like two soldiers running. And they're almost into battle. And it's like a profile view of them. And it's like a buy war bonds thing. I don't know. But you see them running. And I just remember looking at this actual painting and thinking that that, that he had grouped the values together. So like the entire, like both of the figures are just one value. All their clothes were just tied right in together. So the same value and just one shape. And you had a, a set of values for the like a value for the flesh and the background and just how tightly controlled that that um that arrangement was 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 just amazing mm. but somebody stopped me <laughs> no i can't i i love listening yeah, yeah I, I think you're talking about some amazing paintings the thing i was remembering when you were talking about maxwell parish was that you know he's very famous for his his blue like that that luminous blue that he grabs or he creates and i i heard it was something like he would glaze 20 layers of blue to get it to that level yeah yeah Yeah, he did a lot have you ever uh cassandra have you seen any of his originals Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I went out to Brandywine with Illustration Academy, actually. Oh, okay. Did I, did I tell you that I I uh when I went to to the Brandywine for the first time, they didn't have any of the Wyatts up. What? <laughs> Instead, it was a it was a Christmas train uh, display. <laughs> <laughs> Miniatures. <laughs> that feels like a it crime. Is- 
It's incredible. It was an incredible display. It uh, better be some good Christmas tree trains. It was. It was. It was stuff. great. It was beautiful. But they took most of the like all the you know, uh, uh, boys King Arthur and all that kidnapped and all that stuff. It was like in some other, uh, <laughs> other museum. <laughs> wow you know it's just yeah it was funny i was like uh oh. but i did get to see the uh the piles uh nation makers though so that that made it uh and a bunch of beautiful and andrew wyeth uh hmm. sketches uh work uh you know uh studies and things like that but uh yeah just sorry about that right i had to be heartbreaking it was heartbreaking. But That's I went to the Delaware Art Museum though, and that had some of the most incredible art piles I've There you go. Ever. So well, that helps for sure. What happened to Sterling and I were all excited we were gonna go see um uh go to the new museum and uh after the society we went to the opening, the Society of Illustrators then uh uh before the opening we went over to the new museum. We were all excited to see the um uh, it's terrible. I can't think of the name of the great, great drawer um, before uh, uh, Klempt. Um, Chile or? or... Uh, Chile, yeah. And yeah. we were really excited to see the, they had like, they were advertising 35 Chile large drawings. Wow. And we were really excited about it. We got over there and it was under construction that they hadn't any kind of notice at all, but they the floor above was they had i think 15 or 18 clamped pieces whoa stunning and so you don't you know you were depressed for a little bit but then you're worth every minute oh yeah oh of course yeah by the way if anyone wants it i learn about a um, little bit more about what harvey done or uh, think of um Learn from his or how he thought about picture making. There's a, a collection of quotes called An Evening in the Classroom. And you could probably find it. You could I know you can find it reprinted online uh, on Amazon and book form, but you could most likely find it online uh, as well in a PDF form. What's it called again? An Evening in the Classroom. John, do we have that for like... Uh, I should. Do you, do you have that? I I have a PDF of it. I don't know. I I, we should though. All right. If not, we'll hook it up for VAP students. What do you, What are your favorite art reads? A couple of uh, an evening, evening in the classroom. <laughs> uh, the art spirit. Um, Robert, Robert Henry. Yep. Um, a Hawthorne on painting. Yep. Hey, um, a more contemporary one is um, uh, Thomas Wolfe's "The Painted Word." And oh yeah, that's great. That is a killer book, and um, and it's really more about the art world during the New York art world during the seventies and early eighties. Well, you guys uh, try to think of other uh, good books to read because I, I really like that. I was going to say, let's move on to this last pose. It's the longest one. It's 45 minutes. Please post your work. We're doing hashtag share it to Instagram and uh, tag Average Lords Passage, hashtag Drawing Hive, and hashtag Brainiac Hive. I'm dropping it in the chat. So if you don't want to spell it, you can just grab it from there. Perfect. didn't mean to interrupt it's fun okay. hearing a book a book wreck you know uh, i feel like as streaming is taken over all i get now is uh tv show wrecks <laughs> so, <laughs> you know not that there's anything wrong with it it's just oh you know what i'm excited about after i saw you show the um photograph reference of norman rockwell i found a used copy online for ten dollars so that's on its way oh nice yeah that's so really such a excited. good book sandra i can't believe i haven't had it like I'm, I'm embarrassed that i don't have it so now i'm i can't wait for it to show up you know i don't have a copy of that book actually myself now that i think about it it was 
the school I taught at, I used to just borrow it. Oh yeah, maybe I gotta, I should track down a copy myself. I have an evening in the classroom. I'm not, not, not an evening. I have an evening in classroom as well, but uh, I have um, how I make a picture. And I found it for like the original, an original copy of it. And I remember tr seeing one, you know, like one that looked like a, you know, uh, a fleet of 18 wheelers ran over it. And it was like about a hundred bucks. Right. And I was like, yep. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's going to be a no. And one day I found it for $12 on Amazon. <laughs> and it was so like, I know I'm getting rid I know, well, but you know, like, of course, at the time when you, when you go and like pay the money, you're like, okay, um, how am I going to get ripped off here? Is it just going to be right. like a postcard of the image that it's was like fed gamble. through like, <laughs> yeah, fed through a crappy ink inkjet print? Uh, but it was a real book. It was yeah. a real cool. book. So I'm waiting to make sure I didn't just like, cause I, I literally ordered it. Um, it's like used through a Goodwill. So I have no idea the state. of it but okay i thought ten dollars was worth the gamble and i'm really excited for it to show up yeah wow congrats on that that's awesome well you got you have to premiere it on the uh on the on the show on, on drawing hive i, I, I remember a lot of those books they they just they publish them once and then they just is it they're pretty hard to track down right or, yeah, yeah. yep yeah. Because they, they usually coincide with an exhibition of some sort. Yeah. So a lot of them is like an exhibition catalog. And they're like, uh, once once the show's down, it's like, all right, well, this is how we were going to make some some of the money back. or Yeah. And uh, that's about it. I uh, I bought a, there's a, uh, there's a cookbook called Italian American. It's, um, it's written by Martin Scorsese's mom. And it's. <laughs> It's all of the recipes. It's all of the recipes from all of the movies he's ever done. And, oh, that's um, fun. And it's from the 80s or nine. No, not, it was after Goodfellas. So it'd be mid 90s. And uh, it's um because she did craft. What's really cool about Scorsese is it, until his mom died, she did craft services for all of his sets. What? So like, yeah. So like if that. you were on set at a Scorsese movie, it was like a big Italian American oh. dinner for like lunch, which yeah. is nuts. It's not the most conducive to like energy or like productivity or fitting in your costumes well. But yeah, exactly. Man, that would be awesome. But she was this amazing personality. And she wrote this cookbook, and it was called it's called Italian American. It was after his documentary Italian American, and uh, I found it on Amazon for like yeah, thank you, Xander. That's it's great. Um, but uh. I found it online for like $5 and I bought it and I gave it to my friend um, who is not Italian, but a big uh, Goodfellas fan. And then I was like, man, there was one recipe in it that was a red sauce that I loved that me and G made and Gianna, you know, we're all Italian. So it's, it's great. When you find a good red sauce from like another Sicilian, you hold on to it. And I was yeah. like, man, I need that. I need that. recipe again i was like i'm gonna go buy a copy and i got online and they're like they're like you can't find them anywhere and now they're like a hundred to two hundred dollars a copy <laughs> wow. so i hit up alice my friend alice and i was like hey have you tried any of the recipes in italian american and she was like no not yet and i was like can i borrow it and uh i can confidently say she's never getting this book back <laughs> there's not a chance I'm never going back to her yeah it's a great book it's, i think it's the best i think it's the best italian cookbook available yeah. wow oh yeah. i need to i need to find that now because i it's, love it's sicilian i mean like it's of, of course now when he says it now that the uh the the prices of the books are like unobtainium now so a lot well, of good that, that, that here's the here's the a true that. friend would a true friend would yeah. Send me a copy. copies for us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the catch, the catch is, is you do have to find an Italian person to partner with you that has also been raised by like a tribe of Italian women <laughs> who have taught them how to cook. That is, yeah that that won't be a, an issue. Yeah. Um, a fun cookbook 
that I, I always like to get into for really random recipes is I have the Vincent Price cookbook that he and his wife wrote together. What? And yeah, it's a, it's a really great, he's a, got a great shortbread recipe in it. And there's even like an evening that he had at the VMFA, which is the museum here in Richmond that he and his wife went to. And then they got all the recipes for everything they ate. Like, it's just a gem of a cookbook that he made during a time where it was um, like unheard of to be cooking that many different kinds of foods. And he was a big art lover, a big food lover. Apparently he would put on the best parties and just he and his wife would cook all the food and have everyone come over and they'd talk art and food and yeah so that's that's a gem of a cookbook Oh my, that's the last recommendations I thought I'd get today. And I am happy to be pleasantly surprised. I have like this really random things I I try for um the VMFA fellowship every year. I, I don't, I don't know how many, I've lost track how many times I've tried. Um, but one of these times I, I will get it. And when I do, it's my goal to cook that whole meal that he had at the VMFA in honor of it. <laughs> That's amazing. That is an amazing goal. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, it's a whole man. thing because also the creator of Breaking Bad has gotten the VMFA fellowship three times. He's gotten a student one, graduate one, and a professional one. And I have yet to watch Breaking Bad because I love Brian Cranston, Cranston as Malcolm's dad. And I heard that you watch Break, Breaking Bad, you won't seem the other way. So I promised my husband too, if I get it, I then have to watch Breaking Bad. So we have like a yeah. whole spiel. Oh, I, I thought you were boycotting from... Breaking Bad because he won it like a thousand times. Uh... It's his favorite show. And so like, he's like, if you get it, then, you know, out of support, you have to then watch the show. And I was like, of course, I have to support a fellow fellow, but I am forever rejected from it, but this thing keeps getting bigger for every time like I possibly could ever get it. There's like another thing that gets added on if I ever get awarded it. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, watching all of Breaking Bad is a big commitment. So, well, I've gotten rejected but, uh, a lot, but, so I feel like I'm making promises that are. <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah, what about yeah, what about watching Breaking Bad while eating like a thirty course meal? Yeah, so, yeah, from Rizzi Price's cookbook. Yeah, so like, just know this is how weird in my head I get about these things, and um, yeah. So there you go. There's me oversharing for y'all. Do you guys? I, have, I love it. Have Have you guys ever tracked down a like a? Do you have a prized book, a prized art book that you really care about? No, Morocco is how I make a picture. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, you're more of a you're more of a picture book guy. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised. Shouldn't surprise anyone, Ray. <laughs> it's like finding the Dead Sea Scrolls, though, man. Yeah. Like you got to understand that that those are like copies from excerpts from the famous artist course, which used to be based before online education, yeah. and it was a mail in. You know the famous artist course, Timmy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know. Uh, yeah. and so th they had these books and of like, it's just like America's best illustrators just doing demos, like all yeah. the, like John Whitcomb and Al Parker and, uh, Harold Ron Schmidt, uh, Robert Fawcett, Norman Rockwell, Al, Dorn. uh, Al Dorn's, oh my God, his, his like how to do a clothed figure and clothing. Oh man. So I like they printed after the, after all kind of went away or like, uh, was like kind of changed. They printed some of the books or they printed some of the lessons as books. And so like Walt Reed has one and I'm not so sure that's where the Rockwell book comes from. So that's why it's like, it's like so rare to find it. Um, you have a rare book find. Do you, do you have the collection? No, gosh, I, I wish I've, I've seen it. I've, I've, I've paged through it. Um, yeah. but I do not have the collection. It's about 12 you... feet from me right now. No. Um, real fortunate to have a set of the books. Don't invite me over, John. I'm telling you. 
I don't know what's going to happen. Your shelf may look a little emptier after his visit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember uh, years ago, this is about six or seven years ago, uh, Francis Vallejo like printed out the whole thing and posted it. Like uh, scanned the whole thing and posted it online. And of course he got called out pretty quickly, made him take it all down. But he, he's, he, there's, there's somebody you can talk to because I know somebody that's got the whole thing scanned. Oh yeah. yeah, I totally didn't download that as soon as that came out on this. Uh, as as soon as he shared it, so I don't know Did anything really? about no illegal uh, copies of. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done that either. But. I would. <laughs> How totally. distasteful! How distasteful of Francis. <laughs> well, I was, you know, it was like exuberance. That was his defense. I was so exuberant. I was so excited to see all this. I just wanted to share it with everybody. Yeah. That would have been a great excuse for the lime wire guy. <laughs> I was just overcome with thrill over at Napster headquarters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. Okay, Timmy, what's yours? Oh, There's like got to rare... be some old like photographer's book. Yeah. Well, you know what, my dad, I I would say this: my dad has read more books than any person I've ever met. And so um, he did it almost compulsively. Like if, you know how you have like a, like a, a memory of a person. Mm -hmm. My memory of my dad is he had a cigar in his mouth and he was sitting in a robe in his underwear, reading a book. That's fantastic. <laughs> Always. And if I ask any of my friends when they would come over, um, because he would never, my mom would be like, yo, Timmy's having a sleepover. And my, my dad would be like, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> he just be like in his robe put some he, pants like, on yeah no pants <laughs> on yeah he's like what are you you did you suggest him need to put pants on for guests <laughs> no so um so he has an insane collection of books that's still at my mom's house like like every room has books everywhere just that like thousands of books um I remember when I was a really it, when I, a lot of them are history. Yeah, yeah. He he didn't read uh he really rarely read fiction. He did read fiction, but if he did, it was probably the classics, you know, it was like Hemingway and stuff like that. Um Yeah. You know, the whatever, like the great books program, that would be that would have been like what he read, and then everything he did was history or biography. Um but uh <laughs> Yeah, but we had a we had a copy of when I was in grade school, one of one of the Trayvon boys took a copy of The Hobbit from our our school library and oh, never no. returned it. And and it was a um it was a I the school That's didn't know issue. nobody knew this until a few years ago. We were going through all my dad's books and we found this copy of The Hobbit and I was like, man, that's an old looking book. And I, I'm curious, like what edition it was. And we looked it up and it's worth, you know, yeah, all that stuff depends on condition and everything. But yeah, like some of the listings we were seeing was like five, ten thousand dollars for this like copy. Oh my of it. god. And you open you open the page and the the front, the front, like the front, uh it's hard hardback and uh it just says property of Mike Mike Trayvon. <laughs> 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 and you're like you're like this is trash <laughs> like, i wonder yeah. does it have like tolkien's drawings because i know he illustrated like the, uh, you know what you know one. what for a future episode i'll go grab it because it's 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 really uh, we stole it for a reason i'm sure yeah like, you know you so love you would... stuff like that those books were so cool uh, when you were a kid because uh, because like the movies weren't even out then so like right you didn't it just felt like this amazing thing you found that was kind of a secret in the library. Um, I yeah, a, just had the animated movies. I yeah. got a bunch of books that say uh, Spencer Library from University of Kansas, and and it wasn't me. I would I'd add the books at my when I was going to school, and I brought them home, and my dad's looking through these. They're really fantastic books. I got a great sergeant book. And he's he's looking at it and he's like, what would happen if you didn't take these back? 
And I said, well, I'm sure we're going to get penalty and fine and stuff and stuff. He goes, well, let's see how much they charge us. And so yeah, they have a, a whole bunch of Spencer Library books. <laughs> Did you get charged? Yeah, I got charged, but he was happy to pay it because it was a lot cheaper than buying the books. Wow. Yeah, everybody, everybody that cares about their public library is like, you assholes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, nowadays in in universities, they don't let students graduate. Yeah, my uh, diploma got with that. <laughs> Seriously, because the copy of the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to pay a fee. I remember uh, mm. that wasn't that wasn't intentional theft. It was just laziness, and you know, I returned the book, but I had an out, I had an overdue fee, um, and that's where they get you. Ah, uh, okay. Um. Well, books are great. The guy, the artist that I know that has the best art book collection. Um, Can I guess? Yeah, you probably know. George? Yep. George Pratt? Yeah, that, oh, makes I, that makes total sense. Um, I had a, I rented a house in Sarasota. Ended up that George and I rented it together for a while. And, um, but before... Uh, just running it by myself and I rented it from this guy named um, Dennis Heil, a friend, very nice guy, went to the academy, good artist, a super nice guy. <laughs> and he volunteered when George got his job at Ringling, he volunteered to go up to North Carolina and help George move. And I kept telling him, I said, dude, that's going to be no fun at all. all and, book boxes. and he got there. And he calls me and he goes, John, you were so right. He said, <laughs> he said, I just moved the first 10 boxes of books, big, heavy boxes, all packed. They each weighed 30 pounds a piece. And he goes, that was just the books on chess. I haven't gotten to the art books yet. <laughs> a book on chess. Wow. A book on chess. Oof. That's a man with patience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was scary. I, I, when we were running this place together, you had like rooms at op opposite ends of the house. And my wife was down visiting and George was at, George was gone. He was out somewhere and um, we were in a hurry getting ready to go somewhere. So I said, I'll just run down to George's room and, you know, take a shower down there. And I, I go in and I open the door and I'm like, everything's got the windows all blacked out, turn the light on. And there was, I'm not, and this is not an exaggeration, well over a hundred books open with markers laid flat, turned over, you know, on their spines and stuff. He was obviously going through all these books. And I asked him about it that later that night. And he said, oh yeah, he goes, he says, I always have, you know, I'm rereading three or four things that I've read before. And then I have all these other, and I said, are you reading all of those at once? He goes, Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm like, first of all, I think I've only read two books in my life twice. I mean the same book twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he's, he said, I read almost everything two or three times. And I was like, Oh my God. Does he speed read John? Does uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, because I know speed readers will read a couple times because they don't. Yeah, retain, they don't retain as much. That could that could be it. But yeah, you don't. George is a is extremely well read guy. Yeah, he's a rare George creature. Reads a lot of fic George reads a lot of fiction too, though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a storyteller. Yeah, that and it's I, I i it's funny like i wonder the amount of comic stuff he has must be a lot he's got he's got he's got a lot outrageous. of outrageous like a lot of comics he's collected oh my goodness at least yeah, a slider. I, I, yeah at least a slider yeah <laughs> you could stuff him in gigantic uh long boxes though so right. they become like 40 pounds that's true <laughs> yeah it's funny because he you know he was constantly storing it all he he didn't have room to put it in his house i guess he does now but for the longest time he was you know he was just storing the stuff everywhere yeah we had we had so many i mean we had so many books that 
there were, I mean, there were like towers of books in many rooms of our house. And it's kind of, it's one of the most burdensome things you can leave a family. It's like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like mountains of books because you, you have to like, like, how do you audit which ones are valuable and which ones are just like, he didn't even care about, you know? Right. Right. That he read that he started and just was like, ah, this is trash. And then, but you treat all of them like they're special, you know? Right. Right. You know? And then you end up having to put this box together of what you think, because you can't, I don't know, you got to have a big house to keep all of it. Um, and so you, you kind of have to like sort through what you think is, um, I don't know what is worth keeping. And you're kind of like, I guess we can get rid of all of these books about, I don't know, like <laughs> I'm trying to think of like horses. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 John. Those are the ones that we all, <laughs> those, are the, those are the prize ones. No, I think, uh, I think that the one books that I was throwing away was like all of the books about like Y2K that that were published in like 1995 <laughs> that he bought you're like i think these are fine i don't think another the experts, person's, i don't think anybody's yeah. ever gonna read these again <laughs> crash course in windows 95 yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, yeah no i'm not counting manuals <laughs> word perfect six yeah. the ultimate guide no he had a lot of books that were signed like, oh really Yes, he had to go through every single one, make sure it wasn't signed or something. Oh my I, I, we didn't get. I'm not saying we got rid of all of them. I'm just saying we we did go through a we did a combing because you know my mom's like didn't want to live under a mountain of books. <laughs> to Tim, a, I hope this guide helps you with the computer we sent you. Yeah, we did like a, Bill we did like Gates. a light we did like a light <laughs> respectful combing, and you know every once in a while you'd open one up and. There'd be like a note in it or something cool, and you know, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, but I mean, th like thousands and that, like like floor to ceiling, thousands of books. It's wow. But oh, I was thinking about it. And I remember because he always thought like because I had dyslexia, so I couldn't read um, until I was like in fourth grade. Like I, I was like way, 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 way behind on reading. Um. And uh, which was very upsetting for our house, like for him. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I remember I was at a Barnes and Noble with him. For, that's where people used to go buy books, if you're wondering, everybody. And <laughs> or like that was a brief chapter of like uh, box store books. Um, but uh, yeah, it was there, glorious. It was glorious. It, oh was, my God. it was pretty cool. Uh, it's you still go there. But um, but uh, I remember him telling me. You can buy Timmy any book you want. I'll buy it for you. Anytime you ever want a book, I will always buy you that book, unless it's written by Madonna. <laughs> but <laughs> but one person. <laughs> yeah, he, it was so weird. And like, I always think of it because I remember him saying that. And I always think about it. And I'm always like, man, there must have been something on the news about Madonna. <laughs> oh, yeah. She had kind of a, a an adult book. Yeah, yeah. It was like nineteen. Oh, is that what it was? Nineteen ninety-five oh, or something. Uh that is that's uh, who's hilarious. The, who's the photographer she did that with? I have um, no idea. Um what's his name? That's so funny. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I almost said his name. I can't think of it. It's true. You would buy me any book though. Um, I, I have a, a a friend of our family who she had a kid um who got into drumming. I, I think this is amazing advice for like parents and trying to like cultivate um, artistic ability. The kid got into drumming really young. Like he was like seven or eight and uh, she brought him to a drum teacher and the drum teacher was like this, this, this drummer was like, look, your kid is a freak. He's so good. Um, and I don't know how he learned it, but whatever he wants to listen to, you buy it for him. And uh, he is a um, the touring drummer for Drake now. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. He has a, 
he was on uh american he was the drummer for american idol for multiple seasons um he's like a studio drummer um wow and she was telling us that uh she was just like yeah she said he said just don't don't listen don't be like oh i don't like what it means or anything just get it whatever he asks you give it to him and i was like oh that's awesome wow like cult like that's... cultivating creative energy at a young age yeah not bad advice for young artists either yeah whatever ray wants give it to him <laughs> young artists <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start getting demands, John. <laughs> I know. I want a Neumann microphone. <laughs> Give me. Give me. Yeah. Um, Speaking of books that I really liked that I got recently, um, I got one of Terrell Whitlatch's books on drawing creatures. Oh. And I really nice. love it. I pre-ordered her one that's coming out that's like flying monsters, but seeing how she breaks down like a natural animal and then how she adapts it or adjusts it to whatever it needs to be. Like I really enjoyed seeing her look at the anatomy and the muscle structure. And then once she understood that at how she could morph it while still hang hanging on to like the idea of that animal so that you still get it. Like I really, really enjoyed those this, that book a lot. Now you got to explain cool. who Carol is real quickly. Uh, a genius. Well, yeah, but explain what she, what she does and what she's done. She, uh, well, you, like, you know her better than me, but I, I just, I'm amazed at how she draws her creatures. So she's really known well for the creature design that she's done for Star Wars and Lucasfilms, but she's also done stuff with Disney and Pixar and she did Jar Jar Binks. Um, I think that's like her most famous one, but she worked on Brother Bear and um, Brave. And she's just amazing um, at looking at animals and just thinking about how you can morph them. Just even hearing her talk about the difference between an animal that would be a sci-fi animal versus like a fantasy animal and the way that you look at them. I just... I just think she makes it look easy because she has so much information inside her head and she's really great at breaking that down. So I think that there's like any of her books are amazing. Guest speaker at Visual Arts Passage a couple of times. Um, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I... Uh, She's so nice too, just, and just so open about sharing all of her information. I mean, I, I don't think it's at all a reach to say that she's like one of the greatest of all time creature designers, right? I mean, in, in I would Hollywood. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've never been interested in creature design, film, especially just in creature design in general, check out Tara Witch Lash's stuff. It's, the one I got was um, her animals, real and imagined, and then coming out soon. I think it comes out this summer, um, but I pre-ordered early. Is uh, it'll be flying monsters? Oh, that's so cool! Yeah, she told us the great, the greatest story about being just being hired at ILM or at Lucas Film and having one of her first meetings. Her boss. At the time, superior, what is is um, keep, I keep starting stories and I can't remember people's name. I'm struggling. What, Doug Chang was it? Doug Chang? Uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, unbelievable character designer now. Uh, Ian McCake. Ian yeah. McCake. Um, fabulous individual. And she said she was like her first couple of days there. She had this meeting with Ian McCake and this guy named George Lucas. And I'm just thinking, wow, how 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 does that work? <laughs> interesting, interesting job. Well, yeah. and what I thought was so interesting is what she said that got her the job was her ability and understanding of animal anatomy more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And that really surprised me. Because 
they thought if you can understand an animal, you can adapt an animal. And like, that's, she, she really believes there's so much importance that should be put on just understanding the mechanics of, if you're a character designer, just people and then animals. And yeah, I just thought that that was fascinating. Yeah. She, she used to teach at, uh, um, the Academy of Art where I went to school and she like in the, she had a creature design course and I wasn't in, I didn't know anything. And so I, I you know, I, of course I, I was like, oh, well, I don't do creature design. So I'm not going to take that. Course. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Just say, just hearing myself say that. And I, I was like, I'm not gonna do it. terrible. Who? I never, I never heard of her. And I see these uh, she assignments coming out my, Oh, she did. Yeah. Oh, she did that. That. yeah. oh okay. Uh, that makes sense now. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I saw a lot of uh, orthographic um, drawings and like anatomy drawings, like animal anatomy drawings coming out, like assignments coming out of that class, like just tons of them. Um, it was really cool to see. Yeah, well, Ray was wasn't that smart. It was interesting hearing her because I was really curious because she kind of was in that time where dinosaurs were thought of strictly as reptiles and then bridging the dinosaurs more and more towards being birds. And so just hearing her talk about like how that changed because she would do scientific drawings too. Like she, you name it in any way, like she's connected to so many cool projects. Um, so it was just fascinating to hear how she talked about all of that and and then she had Andy, like the whole series of artists that she thought of as animals. So she had, in, instead of Andy Warhol, she had Andy Narwhal. And you mean Narwhal look like Andy Warhol, like stuff like that blew my mind. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, her talk was great because she started like with her influences, how she grew up, what she did of her interests. And everything was like, you know, the design of the Howard Johnson sign. Yeah. yeah, it was just it was so interesting because this is what influenced me. This is where I come from. This was my my world as a child. And I thought, God, that is so good. And it's, I've heard a lot of artists that. a lot of artists talk about talk that way, but she just did such a great job of uh, articulating it. Yeah, to understand how you were influenced by what you saw growing up. And like, she was just go through the decades and she's like, this is what I saw at this age. And this was what's around me. And that made me think of this. And she would build and you were like, okay, interesting. And then you watch how it all kind of came out in her art. And that was just fascinating. It made me want to think a little bit more about the way I've seen things and what I grew up with and how that's affected me. Like, I just, I didn't think of it that way until I heard her talk about it. It just goes to show you that she's not creating in a vacuum, right? It's like, right. she's so aware. Uh, and people I've at that level been. are. Yeah. That's what's great. She was such an aware child, you know? Mm -hmm. That requires a lot of reflection to put that together. Yeah. Yeah. I've always I've always thought that it's like I think that you you tend to create your aesthetics. You 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 you, um, you always kind of lean towards the aesthetics that you were exposed to as a child. You know, it's like what you know where you grew up. What what looks right to you. Um. I think a lot of that is what you, you know, how you learned and what you were exposed to. Mm -hmm. and I, I always think about, I grew up on the East coast and I always, I always go back to the East coast after being in Kansas city. And it's like, oh, man, it's so beautiful here. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah definitely my, is a my, my aesthetics were mostly, uh, uh, boy bands. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, I, I put a lot of my, uh, put a lot of capital into in sync when I was in third grade. That's amazing. Yeah. I can see you were like frosted tips. I didn't, I wasn't that cool. <laughs> Come on, man. No, man. You don't have to, you're in a safe zone. I know. I was talking with that. I was that would have been him. worse than like, I could, I could see his father reaction to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would have been bald the next day. <laughs> That's I, what I, would I, can, I can fix that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'd have been like, you, you got it. No, I was talking with a good friend of mine the other day uh, that I've I've known since we were like 19, 20. And he was like, yeah, when I was in fifth grade, I had pierced earrings. And I was like, I would have crossed the street if I had seen you going my way. <laughs> I would have been like, that's one of the cool kids. We got to stay away. <laughs> He's going to hurt us. I already know I'm not allowed to hang out with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I literally so true, was like, though. I literally was like, dude, you know that you were on a list at other houses of like the kid that people aren't allowed to hang out with, and he was like, yeah, it's like oh, what his parents, his parents let him, his parents let him have e piercings. Yeah, <sighs> what's next? Bank robbery? Yeah, I mean that was like the height of like '90s. Like, yeah, people people don't realize there was only one place where you got the news, and it was MTV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. America's downfall. Yeah. yeah. MTV. The downfall of the American youth. Uh, it's amazing how short of a window MTV operated in the media space, but how oh my iconic goodness. it still is. Oh my God. I, I I adored MTV when it came out. But it was a blip. Oh, it didn't stick around. Right. It was a it, when you look at it from like the long scheme of things, it was a blip in pop culture. But it kicked off a lot. Yeah, it did. I'm not no, I'm not downplaying it. I'm just no, no, it, no. I'm just continuing on what you're right. saying. Yeah, yeah. It's a testament, honestly, to how potent it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I remember. Oh man, the idea of like your your music being the success or failure of a song being based off of like how well it trended on how well it got aired at a, or, or covered like how frequently on MTV. It was played on MTV. Yeah. And it, a lot of times like the song could be awful, but if the video was good enough, then it, it'd be all about the video. I've never even thought about that. There might be songs that I thought were great that the video, it was just the video. It was just a video. Yeah. Yeah. Everything by Cisco. <laughs> Um, Did, um any Whoa. of you guys watch... let's pump the brakes here <laughs> Did any of you guys watch that documentary on like the making of thriller? Yeah, oh yeah. The album? That was a that was a yep. fascinating documentary. Is it MTV documentary? No, it's on Paramount Plus. Um wow. but like they go into how MTV originally would not show any of Michael Jackson's videos and so then he made yep. a personal goal to take it to such a level, they right. couldn't not not show it. And then he became really? like their prize and the thing that saved them. He had it in his contract in my in uh with with MTV that he had to be referred to as the king of pop. So if, <laughs> if we go like that was in his contract. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I mean But he kind of was. <laughs> Yeah, but he was. Yeah, but yeah, like, talk but about at the same time. Right? At the same time, there were like five other guys that were like, "No, I'm the king of pop." <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So it was really interesting hearing like the studio musicians talk, and like I didn't, you know, I was, I was a kid, like a little kid when it all came out, and I remember my dad playing the record, but I had no understanding of of like the level that it was all at until much later. So it was fascinating to kind of watch how it was made, all the artists that worked with him on it, but how, how much control he had over it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they thought uh, it's crazy. Uh, Timmy, at one point they thought Thriller was going to be a bust. Like that was Michael a Jackson was idea. crying after the first like rounds of <laughs> really? it was like my career's done. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Huh. You think of MTV early MTV, I, I I immediately think of Jay Giles. It's just like those the videos, the original first real edgy videos they had on there were so much fun. It it's so interesting. <laughs> it's, it's not to it's not to um like, cause I understand like MTV still, you know, they still produce movies and they produce documentaries and they do things, but they're, they're a fraction of what they were 
as far as oh, like, yeah. part of the conversation. Like not even to say they're part of the conversation now wouldn't be accurate. But it's like interesting because like <laughs> Com- Comedy Central, like it's so funny because like I've gotten to meet and connect with a lot of comedians that are like, um, you know, like they're considering like deals and like where to go and stuff. Comedy Central is dead. It no longer has any relevance yep. to any of anybody that like has like Amazing. a future in comedy. And you just start to realize like, like all Titans fall. <laughs> like, you know, it, cause that was, cause 15 years ago, that would have been uh, no way. No way. Just, you couldn't have had a comedy career without Comedy Central 15 years ago. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, these are like your your uh, your thoughts in the uh, like your musings in in the Shake Shack. Yeah, in the Shake. Yeah. Shack. No, I thought I thought it was interesting. I I heard Jeff Bezos give a talk a while ago to Amazon employees, and he basically was like, "Look, the average lifespan of a corporation like this is about thirty years," and I always thought. That's a wild thing to tell your company, <laughs> but also kind of honest. Oh, he was on. I, I remember when Amazon first came out. Yeah, people were saying, "Well, it, it it was losing more money than it was making." Yeah, because they were doing all this infrastructure investment and yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I used to just on MTV one one little uh, cool thing. Um, well, interesting. I, I used to, I interned there uh, at, kidding? at college. Yeah. I'm so sorry. We just trashed MTV for like. No, no. It, it was, it was really interesting. It was during the time of like the road rules and the. Yeah. Uh, real. Um, oh, this golden era. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Real life. Um, yeah. All those things. So, like, was it? Were you there for the Jackass era? That was like a two-year era. Uh, I was just there for a summer. I let's see, what was the one? Did you go to Lake Havasu? What's what's Lake Havasu? <laughs> oh man, that's maybe that was at the MTV Lake House. Yeah, where they did their they did their like summer. I don't know. Oh what. yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, it it's. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll never uh, work for for MTV. Uh, <laughs> basically, as an intern, you had to, you could go there if you wanted to, but you had to go. You had to get there by like six in the morning. If like if you wanted to work one of those shows, you could do it on volunteer, and you had to bring your own lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. and you had to. Uh, yeah, it was like all these things like. No, like I'm not gonna be working all day and then eating a, you know, a ham sandwich that I poorly made, you know, like catching the train out there. It was, uh, so I never went. I had the opportunity to, and I was like, nope, I'm gonna stay here because it was in the summer in New York. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I um, think I'm gonna just uh, work on stuff. Hey, everybody, uh, please start posting your uh, last bit of work. We're gonna keep talking for a little bit, but uh, please start posting it to Instagram. It's hashtag Brainiac Hive. Hashtag drawing hive and at visual arts passage. I'll drop it in the chat, but please start posting it now. Don't wait. We're going to be over there in about five minutes. But, but the cool thing that I saw was the emergence of like, uh, of videos on the internet being used all like, like people there being a need for video content on the internet was like getting nuts like behind the scenes and all these things. And so like, you know, it was about like having a centralized place where you could see video clips. And like, it was like the beginnings of YouTube. It's, it was really wild to see, like, see that kind of coming about uh, or like the application of it, uh, because yeah. that was like a real, like, how do you get video on the internet? And there was a whole pipeline that they would, would do. And nowadays it's like, it's so easy. Cause I mean, we're doing we're doing live, you know. I mean, for them to do live was was nuts on the internet. Oh my god, it was crazy. That is 
that is super interesting because like i'm i'm trying to remember like uh well yeah like you saying mtv as like pre-internet concept is actually really interesting because it it's all bite-sized content that was like five minutes at most um, right yeah you know like i remember editing i got into like i would do all my assignments like you know organize this this drawer just this board clean this up you know all the like the intern things yeah. but then once i was done i would go, keep asking for people that i kept saying like you know i edit video and i know yeah. final cut and they were like really you want this and like you want these clips that we have to to yeah. clip for this like uh three on three basketball uh a series called you who's got game and i'm like yep i'll do it he's like just okay you can do whatever you want just keep it to like three minutes you know or like we're looking for a minute clip on this here's oh, all the footage amazing. yeah and i took i would take it home you know and, and just edit it and then yeah. bring it back you know uh, do, do you guys all remember i this all reminds me like this idea of a thing that was like almost ahead of its time or not even ahead of its time but just like it had to it had to walk so other things could run. But do you remember Vine? Of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you have a Did you have a Vine account at any point? Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, I didn't produce any Vine. I just to look at it. So, uh, did I you would, need an account to look at it? Uh, I, I don't know. Probably yeah. because that was back in the day before they started realizing like we'll just make people do it. No, I I loved Vine because it was before social media was addicting. So like you wouldn't get addicted to it. You wouldn't like, like the thing that would happen with Vine is like, there was never a time where I like looked up and been like, Oh my God, it's been four hours. <laughs> right. You know? Um, but, yeah. but some of the creators on Vine, I remember would do like really long, like, like narrative stories and mm -hmm. they, and collaborations that were like really amazing in these like six and like the rules were so rigid. It kind of reminds me, John, of your uh your color assignment for your intro class, in that like it created it created these rules because you couldn't import any video into it. It could only be like six seconds long or something like that. And so it it created these like these boundaries that made creating like a story really fun and and uh i remember being devastated when i re I remember being so upset when they went out i was like man that was so good and like basically everybody that was famous on vine now is like an internet personality but right yeah it's got got a lot of people's careers started yeah. but it changed i think it was the beginning of of how editing like it helped change editing yeah right exactly so, like what TikTok it was so doing. hard it was so hard to produce a good vine like yeah yeah it was so hard it was so impressive yeah yeah when I mean, you talk about like having really you need to have really sharp narrative skills where it's like what tells the story fast you know right Sorry, I'm just adding some. I want to expand on stuff. I just got trying to finish this off before I get cut off here. John, that hair is amazing. Yeah, John, you made me want to quit mines because it was like, nope, I think John's got it figured out. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to another one. <laughs> it looks so good. Pretty fun one, to, fun one to play with. I. I'm not going to finish this by any means, but I'm, honestly, I think if you stop there, it's an amazing painting. Like I, I love it. Now that what I've been trying to concentrate on more with painting is like creating as much chaos as I can at the beginning mm. and then kind of trying to find my way out of it. I like that. That's awesome. So started you know, all of this stuff was just like put down with a palette knife, no organization. And then now I'm just going back in and starting to you know, draw back in a little detail. So oh, cool. Is it, uh, is there a reason, um, 
why why you're you're taking that that approach i mean i i um like why would you if somebody were were to ask you why would you want to take an approach where you're going so chaotic big shapes and kind of uh, whittling it down you can't do it the other way around at least i count i don't have the mindset to do it the other way around you got to put yourself you got to make all the fun interest in mark making all that stuff at the beginning and then just kind of deal with it you know make it work but you can't it's it, you can't establish those things later it's well it's it's hard for me anyway to establish those things later in the painting Does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah you're, you're seeing the forest before the trees right I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> That's the way I felt today in the studio. I don't know what I'm doing. Is this good? <laughs> no, I, I I really have been been going through that a lot recently. It's like questioning everything I do. And you know, I was talking to Dale about it recently, and it's like, it seems like all I do is second guess myself. And it's like, I go to bed at night thinking about a painting, I wake up and that's what I'm thinking about. And, and then I remembered, oh, that, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's how it is. That's what I was trying to get back to. You guys ready to see some art? Let's do it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's looking awesome. What? Look Jeez, at that. people. Ah, uh, amazing. <laughs> oh, that's fun. There's some, yeah. some. Oh, cake, man. So good. <laughs> oh, I love it, Randy. That's <laughs> so awesome. The scowl. Ooh, oh, that's lovely. Great. Nice. Lovely. Right. Great job. <laughs> oh, look at that one, too. I love it. Off. I need to get better at fire. Nice. Kind of made him like up. Zeus with like it almost yeah. looks like lightning <laughs> for the hair. Love it. <laughs> oh, oh, awesome! Oh, that's great. Oh my god! Oh wow! Whoa, so Felicity! Good. Wow! Oh man, Felicity oh, has to go. Oh, wow, that Addy! So good. Just beautiful. Wow. <laughs> oh, I love it. Nice. That's, That's cool. that he's gonna use that as an album cover for somebody. <laughs> yeah, seriously, right? Tag him. Yeah. Nice, Xander. Great job, Xander. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, Beautiful. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah. Nice. I love that. Nice. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, that's great. Cool. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 Process at work. Yep. Oh, nice. lovely, Karen. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's nice, wow. AJ. Really nice. What, what are these people doing the one that I did? I was hoping that I was going to avoid that. <laughs> great job. Yeah, that's great. Hey, wow. Wow. Oh, I Thank like you. that you added the ape. Great job. <laughs> that is a nice touch. <laughs> Next week, wow. I'll throw in a couple other photos that the crowd doesn't have. So we I can love, yeah please yeah <laughs> I love this one that's great really nice yeah. these are all capturing the energy man this is mm -hmm. look at that <laughs> <laughs> yep oh that's yeah. great great job really oh, nice. nice yeah very nice. Wow, Nicole. Oh, that's cool. There you go. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. That's how that's like a book cover. Oh, great job. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Nice. That's, that's really cool. Nice. Sorry, I'm gonna try to follow everybody at the end. But I like to do it when I can. Oh nice. Lovely. So Just awesome. lovely. I love the man behind her. Nice. Good job. Wow. Nice. There you go. That's Sagan right there. Yeah. Good job. Nice.
Wow. Look at that. Oh, really yeah. There you go, Julian. You got some in there. Oh, nice. that's good. Jeez. The hair, beautifully wow. done. Ooh, that's wow. Good. I love that. Awesome. awesome. With the stars in the background. Very That's powerful. awesome, Christopher. Yeah. That's awesome. Look at that. Nice, Jeez. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's back to back to back to back to back. Right? <laughs> nice. People. Oh, wow. Oh, oh Devin. Nice. Devin. There you go, Devin. That's nice. Really nice. Makes me want to get back into turtlenecks. That's beautiful. Um, <laughs> Turtlenecks and blazers. Bring Devin, that's the, the highest form. That's the highest compliment you're ever gonna get from Jimmy. Your art yeah. makes me want to get back at the turtlenecks. <laughs> Great job, Terry. Nice. Very nice. Ooh. Oh, lovely. nice. Very oh. nice. Really lovely. Good that job. One too. That's great. Fine. Yep. Good job. Really nice. Nice. Oh, that's really fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Great. Oh, what? the valley's nice. hard. That's a nice one. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he has to, like, hey. I feel like, Jeff, you're just upping it. What are you? Did you yeah. do like 16 today? What is this? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, you know what's true is Jeff Jeff has like a team of people at his house. He works that fast. That is right. Lovely. So four people outside of the fact that he's amb you know, Jeff's ambidextrous too, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah. I like a uh, Warhol workshop going on. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah I know. Right? Get Hetty there. Nice. Ooh. Oh, dang. oh that's wow. awesome. Love that purple. People much smarter than me. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Nice, Julian. Yeah. Good job. That's great. Yeah. There we go. That's awesome. More Whoa. Awesome stars. Yes. Sorry, I'm trying to follow when I see them. Nice. That's overdue. There you go. Um, oh, man. Oh, awesome. nice, Marcy. <laughs> I'm going to come back and follow everybody. Wow. Oh, nice. So much fun. <laughs> You made him like you made him like sexy though. <laughs> it's like hipster version of him. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 That's that's, um, that's the whole. Uh, that's the uh, that's totally like part of the meme. I'm gonna tell my kids this is Rick Rubin. This is where yeah, Rick Rubin, like. Rick Rubin. Yeah, Rick Rubin wishes. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Nice. Really nice. Awesome stuff. Ooh. That's great. Uh, nice. Oh, oh that's so yeah, it's great. Beautiful line work there. That's great. Oh, great. Nice, Rebecca. Awesome. <laughs> nice, nice Andrew. Andrew. That's you get a lot exciting. done, man. Wow. Wow. wow, damn. Also, that is awesome. so fun, Joe. <laughs> so much fun. Jeez. I love how you did that. <laughs> yeah, that's so much fun. It wow. looks John, like we a, should like. It looks like a nerd we, trading card, <laughs> right? We got we got to get like art directors from like the New York Times or like newspapers here because like I mean, we, these people are turning out. Saints. I love it. <laughs> yeah, look at the artwork yeah, we're it's turning like out. A saint, it's that like a hand is perfect. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like a it's saint like card, a, like yeah. a prayer card. Yeah. It's got a very Anita Kuntz feel to it. Is is this, a, yeah, I gotta know. Is it supposed to be like a prayer card? That's awesome. Yeah, it's totally like a medieval saint. Yeah. Ooh. More than you one, Joe. Wow. Joe, you got it's so kind of like done. a medieval demon. <laughs> Another ambidextrous uh, yeah. uh, right? participant. Two, two at the same time. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Really nice. I'm going to go back that. and follow everybody later. This is great. Oh, That's great. God. Awesome. Oh, nice, Kathleen. Kathleen. That's great. That oh. is so oh, lovely. Right. Love how you handle that, Kathleen. There we go. Good job. Hey, so, Ray, why are we doing this again? I mean, just <laughs> yeah. is there, is there a know. reason that I, you know, like, oh, that was put fantastic. my tongue yeah. crap all the time? We're, we're masochist, man. I, mean, I know. It's, an, it's a problem. Oh, oh my goodness. So good. Awesome. Great job. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, a lot of people tonight. 
Awesome. Ted, these people are just bringing it tonight. Hey, wrapped yeah. it. It's crazy. Ooh. Look at that. Ooh. Damn. Damn. Lovely. Just lovely. Well, we'll go back to that name of the artist, Christopher. Yeah. Well, he and Christopher, the model, ought to get together. That's interesting because there's the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Artist Christopher. Yeah, the you model, know Christopher, Christopher the model. Yeah, <laughs> they're brothers. Yeah, <laughs> love Good it. Job. <laughs> we already have a Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's man. beautiful. Nice. Uh, we'll make beautiful, room for man. one more Christopher. Oh that's yeah, maybe really we'll. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's some fun. Oh, I love this. Nice. Uh, Great job. Awesome. Love it. Timmy, you could break the news to the other Christopher that he's been bumped. Oh, I'll have no, I'll enjoy Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's get awesome. Life. Get life. We don't even talk <laughs> about you anymore. <laughs> we found a Christopher who's an artist. Yeah. Can you draw now? Well, this other Christopher can. Yeah. Good job. Uh, that's great. Wow. Really nice. Damn. That's so much fun. Awesome. Yeah. Great soundtrack. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Well chosen. Yeah. Well chosen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it, everybody. That's oh, yeah. it. Wow. That's yeah. Everyone did fantastic. Thank oh, you. Oh my awesome, goodness. Everybody. I love seeing wow. that so much. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh we'll be here next week. We're gonna come up with a fun theme. I've been messaging. We might have a we might have a, a salad cues revival. We've got a couple ideas. We're going to get some guest artists on. So it's going to be fun. We got some fun episodes ahead. So please okay. tune in next week. All right. Good fun night, everybody. Cassandra, Ray, Timmy, thank you all. I really appreciate it. And it's uh, really fun to hang with you guys and draw and paint with you. Yep. Thank Likewise. you. Likewise. Thanks, everyone. So fun Bye. to be with you all. Bye. Bye.